So in this video, we'll be doing a head-to-head -head of the latest LG C1 against its predecessor, the LG CX. Do you know which one's which? Let's take a closer look. Don't forget to hit the red button to subscribe and give this video a thumbs up and click the notification bell to get my next video first. At the time of making this video, at the beginning of April 2021, the prices are quite substantially different for these two models. The C10, the latest price is 2021, you can save up to £700 depending on what model you go for, or up to $500. So that is a big, big saving. And it really is worth you considering, is it worth that saving to go for the slightly older model, or do you want the new model? Well, let's find out whether it's worth it. So as usual, my friends, for full disclosure, we have bought both of these TVs at full retail value. We're not being asked to say anything good or bad about them. It does help us as a channel if you wouldn't mind just commenting, liking, and maybe subscribing to our channel. Thank you so much. So a few days ago, I did my unboxing and setup video of the LG OLED C1. I'll leave that link in the description for you if you haven't already checked that out. But in today's video, we're going to be looking at it head to head with its predecessor, the C10 or the CX. Here are the different timestamps for the different sections we'll be talking about, and you can click those links in the description as well. Right, I think it's fair enough time that we started, so let's go first straight on to the physical changes, or lack of physical changes. Now, I think his answer's on the postcard time for why have LG decided to make the majority of the sets available in white. I know that they still do do this in black, but I couldn't see any in the UK at the time of doing this video. Let me know whether you've got one in black, but I don't think it makes any difference at all. I really just don't see what the point was. But hey, I guess it's something which they can say is a difference. The slightly basic cable management system is exactly the same on both sets. You've got the pull-off part where you can put the cables through and then pop it back on. The only other very minor difference I could see is on this year's model, the line effect on the back, the grain, is very, very slightly different. You've got almost these lines, whereas on last year's model, the C10, it's almost a brushed steel type effect. But other than that, it's very, very similar. I'll run through all of the specs later in this video, but pretty much everything else is absolutely identical. I really like the new remote control. It feels better to hold, the clicking of the buttons is just more satisfying and more natural, and although I didn't think I had a problem with the previous remote, I think I like the other one more. I will go into more detail in the full review. This year's C1 runs the new WebOS 6.0, and so therefore some of the setup screens look very similar, but are slightly different. There are also a couple of additions. This year on the sound setup, you do get the option for optimized setting, depending on whether you're going for a stand or wall mounted. We will test the sound a little bit later. One of the things that the new processor is said to do is improve the artificial intelligence of both the sound and also the picture, and upscaling is meant to be better. So again, we'll put that to its test. Now, if you do want a full step-by-step -step setup of the new system, then let me know in the comments because I'm happy to do that, but I'm not gonna bore people in this video with that. Most of the other setup options are very similar to last year's, just a slightly different look. One big change this year, though, is that all of the connected services like the on-demand services here in the UK are there to start off with. You don't have to worry about those being missing for six months like they were with the C10. This is the other big difference as well. You get Freeview Play, whereas on the previous C10, you only had Freeview. And again, this is more a UK-based issue, and it's definitely an advantage. It just gives you those connected services, whereas the standard Freeview doesn't. Let us know if you're in a different part of the world and you've got an improved service with the C1 compared to the predecessor of the C10. With the new software comes a new look. Last year we had this, which, you know, with the A9 Generation 3 processor, it operated very smoothly and very quickly, but it just didn't look that good. Coupled with that, we had a big issue at the beginning of the year with the brand new release not having half of the on-demand services, which again, you don't have that problem this year. The new software, Web OS 6.0 is definitely a marked improvement. When you press the home screen now, you go into this section where you can go in and customize the top third. You can then have direct access to your home dashboard and you've got all of your apps and the other bits and pieces that you probably would want to go to. There was something in the middle there that wasn't loading quite properly. I'll have another look at that ready for the full review, but everything is easy to operate and very smooth. The home dashboard looked good, very similar to the other one, but it 
was the app store and where all the apps were again a lot easier to navigate and it was just seemed a lot straightforward very much an improvement from the previous operation so in a moment i'm going to compare the standard definition and high definition upscaling on both sets but i just wanted to show you the menus i'm not going to spend too much time in here because again it can get a little bit tedious but i will go through the full menu system on the main full review of the C1 and you can look back at the C10. One thing that is a key difference, so you go through the actual menu options and you've got your eco, your cinema, your standard, the sports, but then uh, you've got game and game optimizer. So game optimizer is something again we'll look at in more detail on the C1 review, but we will touch on it. But also we've not got HDR effect on the C1, which we did have on the C10, and we just go straight to filmmaker mode and that looks a little bit darker, I do have to say, but again, we'll compare those. And then we've got the ISF expert in Brightroom and ISF expert in Darkroom. So we're missing HDR effect, but, but we have got that game optimizer. And I will see whether that makes any difference when we're comparing gaming in just a few moments. Okay, so in this test, I've recorded the same program in standard definition and in high definition. I've then recorded each of those on a camera. This is not going through any amp. So this is literally a camera right in front of the TV. Now, what's your thoughts, guys? We've got the C10s on the left, standard definition at the top, high definition at the bottom, and we've got the C1s again on the right and standard definition at the top and high definition at the bottom. I will zoom in in just a moment so you can get a better idea but my initial thoughts are I think that the C1 does better in upscaling standard definition but it doesn't do any better at all in fact it may be even slightly worse upscaling high definition. That's just the way that I'm reading this but you know what's your thoughts on these? Certainly what I would say is that doesn't seem to be a marked improvement and it shows you how good the C10 is. Both of these TVs are in exactly the same mode. They're in ISF dark mode, or sorry, ISF dark room expert mode. And, you know, I think that they're all very similar. Let's zoom in and see whether you can see any difference when we zoom in. So here we've got the C1 on the right hand side and the C10 on the left hand side. And as you can see, the differences are very minor but I still think the C10 just edges it. What's your thoughts? Okay now let's see how it deals with a 4k input so I've headed over to my channel and I'm just showing the last video that I made about this projector. On the left is the C10, on the right is the C1 and again I can see very very little difference. Maybe just a minor sharpness improvement on the C1 and again let's view that a little bit closer but I don't know guys, maybe very, very slight, very slight sharpness improvement on the C1. That's what I'm saying. Okay, we'll go on to gaming in just a few moments, but here's a few more clips of the comparison between the two. And again, both TVs are running a 4K input. On the left, as always, is gonna be the C10, and on the right is the C1. And again, there's very, very little difference between the two. But I am noticing the more the different scenes I'm seeing, I'm seeing slight more sharpness on the C1. Here, for instance, if you look at the face of the parrot, I think that the C1, it just is slightly crisper but it's very very minor it really is and in most scenes like here I can barely split them now it may well be after I've played with the settings because obviously this is just standard out of the box in ISF expert dark mode if I've played with the settings and calibrated a little bit more then you may find that we get a little bit more out of the TV so we'll cover that in the full review but if you're worried that you're going to be buying an inferior model if you go for the C10 well I think this probably answers it right on to gaming now and we're going to be doing a couple of different tests I'm not going to go right through a whole game with you but obviously we're going to be putting it into gaming mode both TVs go into the gaming mode and on the C10 it goes into game optimizer and again what I'll do ready for the full review is I'll play about with that optimizer and see whether I can get the difference between the two and I'll come back to this review and let you know if I can so we're playing dirt 5 at the moment 
and it looks amazing. I'll come back to this one in a second, but I just wanted to show you the opening scene to a uh, little section in Outriders. So I'm going to just pan around. This is with the C10. So I'm going to pan around 360 degrees and you get an idea. I'll do this side by side in a second so you get a comparison. By the way, this game is absolutely incredible. And if you've got a PS5 and you're looking for a TV, well, either of these OLEDs will just be amazing with the PS5. But this is what it looks like and it's absolutely stunning. Looks insanely sharp and beautiful. It really is brilliant. Okay, so let's now have a look to see the differences with the C1. Now, because I'm recording the TV, it's in game optimizer mode, I've got the camera right in front of the TV, this is not gonna be identical, but I definitely think it looks better on the C1. I definitely think there is just much more sharpness again, and the clarity just is there. If anything, it's slightly dark, it's a touch darker than on the C10, but I think we can bring that out if I tweak the settings. And what I will do, once I've found my optimum settings for all of the different functions, whether it be standard definition, high definition, gaming, I will um, either do a video or I'll pop them on my website. And you can uh, check those out for yourselves. Right, okay, let's now look at a head-to-head -head with both these scenes on both TVs and see whether you can see any difference. Although the scene will be slightly different because, as I said, I'm recording them individually. So I've just tried to recreate the same scene. C1 is on the right, C10 is on the left. Let me know in the comments what your thoughts are. Okay, so back to Dirt 5 now, and again, you know, there's just very very little difference between the two this time it is going through my 4k amp so there may be a difference in hdr not being picked up properly um, but have a look at the difference look at the highlights look at the clouds i think that the clouds on the left hand side are slightly more blown out than they are on the right and again we've got the c1 on the right c10 on the left but um, again very very little difference between the two uh, maybe marginally I think in gaming in general, without me playing too much with the optimizer settings, out of the box, I would have to say that the gaming does feel significantly different, and it probably is coming across more in real life than it is on the screen that you're watching, but it did seem a marked improvement. As soon as I started playing any gaming, it definitely seemed a lot better. But when I say a lot, I am actually splitting hairs. It, it seemed better, maybe 10-15% better. Now for the first time you have Game Optimizer and this is where you can go in and tweak the settings of your game controls. You can even set the genre of the game to whether it be first person shooter or a real time strategy game. All of these are different settings that you can now do. You can go in and adjust the black stabilizer, white stabilizer, OLED motion for fast paced games and if you want to you can reduce the blue light just in case you want to get some sleep. You can also quicken up the input delay so you can go from standard or to boost mode and that will then slow the input delay even further although even on this TV it is almost negligible. I really like the fact that you can control the sound. So you've got AI sound control here and that will support the best possible sound. And you've got options for VIR, so variable refresh rate and G-Sync, as well as AMD FreeSync Premium if your device supports that. Now you can, if you want to, go in and tune those dark areas even further. But to be honest with you, I found that the settings were pretty much brilliant as soon as I chose first person shooter. It looked absolutely incredible. Now one thing that is meant to be different is the sound and it's meant to be greater improved with the new processor. So I'm going to play you a clip, it will indicate on there what's coming from the C10 and what's coming from the C1 and then you can let me know.
Again, I'm not sure how well that came across to you guys, but there is definitely a marked improvement on the C1. It definitely felt not so much more bass, it just felt like almost there was more surround. So that virtual surround that they're talking about definitely seems like it was in effect and it definitely filled the room. Whether you could tell any difference, I'm not sure, but if you had headphones on, then probably that was your best way of finding out. So my friends, we've covered most of the main subjects in this video and I think it's now time to give my initial summary. Now I decided to do the side by side with the C10 and the C1 before doing my full review of the C1 because I wanted just to see the difference and many, many people were asking about seeing them side by side. So what's my thoughts? Well, I'm not sure it's worth five or six hundred pounds more than the C10. Certainly, if you can pick the C10 up at the moment, then great. Now, I am going to play with it for the next week. I'm going to try and get the best possible settings. And when I do my full C1 review, I will then let you know whether it is definitely worthwhile sticking with the C10 or purchasing the C1. What we do know is that this TV will be supported with further updates, probably longer than the C10. But if I'm being completely honest, my first impression is that LG seem to have come to the end of the line now with this C series. We've seen the improvements in the gallery series, the extra peak brightness, and I think that something's gonna have to change next year on the C series. It's got to be a bigger reason to purchase the TV rather than the minor changes. And and although they brought the price down from £100 or buy £100 or $100 from the original last year, you know, it just doesn't seem enough difference. And my inkling is that I'm going to come out and recommend people go for the C10. It may be different in a week's time once I've had it for that amount of time. I've changed the settings and played with it. But guys, that's the way I'm edging at the moment. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments. Have you seen enough differences in this video to warrant the extra money? Or do you think that you're going to save extra with the C10? Thanks for watching this video. As always, please like, share and subscribe. And I look forward to seeing you on the next one.